train the kids for a war. Army chic in high fashion stores. Law and order's done their job. Prisons filled while the rich to rob. Assassination politics. Violence rules within our nation's midst. Well, ignorance is their power too. You'll only know what they want you to know. The television cannot lie. Controlling media with smokescreen eyes. The clear politicians' picture show. The acting's lousy, but the blind don't know. Open your I'm Ash Gray, and this song is called Billy. Arizona sun was sinking into red when Billy heard the blast of a pistol up ahead. Trying to beat the law down New Mexico way the Billy made the law in this outlaw game Well the shot tore fire through the middle of the night And Billy rode harder just to keep himself alive Horse kicked up the Billy went down Bullet caught Billy when he hit the ground Spent a long time running Billy Can't you see your time is coming Spent a long time burning up your soul Spent a long time running, Billy Can't you see your time is coming Better kick that horse and get on down the road Well, the bullet couldn't tell him he was on the wrong side Billy got up and left the law behind him Laughing to himself about the way he showed And by the light in the moon of New Mexico Well, it wasn't the first time that Billy got away He was known for leaving law that way Get the grass growing down Fort Sumner way you can still read the legend to this day spent a long time running Billy can't you see your time is coming spent a long time burning up your soul spent a long time running Billy can't you see your time is coming better kick that horse and get on down the road and the law up on Billy. The law, the law was roaring down his trail. And the law, the law wasn't gonna give up on Billy. Saying, let's hang Billy by the front of the courthouse jail. Time is coming, spent a long time burning up your soul. Spent a long time running, Billy. Can't you see your time is coming, better kick that horse and get on down the road. Welcome, Earthlings, back to the deprogramming hour. We are here with Ash Gray, <laughs> musician extraordinaire, guitarist extraordinaire. How long have you been playing music and this type of music? Um, I'd say I've been playing now for about 20 years, you know, on and off. But um, 
uh, as far as professionally, I'd say about 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. How did you start and what was sort of your first, what kind of music like really hit you and made you think, I want to do this? I think uh, it's probably just listening to uh, early on, you know, from childhood, listening to Beatles records and, and uh, you know, my parents' uh, weird record collection. They, they weren't really musicians, but they had an inspiring collection of stuff like Herb Albert to the Beatles. To really eclectic, <laughs> like yeah. varied stuff. Yeah, very, very. My dad was more jazzy and my mom was into pop music, but it was kind of an abandoned collection. Uh, I think just from pre-marriage, I think their collection was from. So it's like very different, you know. What kind of picking do you do? Um, well, a lot of it is like really uh, country-inspired kind of picking. I use my pick. Oh, you have a microphone yourself. Oh, sorry. I can use this one. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I use my pick and fingers a lot. Um, I think it's really common to for a lot of guys to just use just their fingers or just pick. But I like the diversity of using a pick and fingers because you can just go back and forth to. Yeah using your fingers as well so I think it these are these songs sound really like classic. I mean, are they originals? Or they're all they? originals. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah they're, they're trying really to sound classic. <laughs> you are. Well, you're yeah. succeeding at it. Yeah. I like, I mean, speaking of like like classic stuff, I do um, stuff that is very '60s tinged too. And I have this other group called Ash Gray and the Girls, mm -hmm. and it's it's original music that's focused on trying to sound like a '60s thing. Okay. And uh, when I'm by myself, I tend to lean more into the country. Kind okay. Of angle or, or folk. What are your or What are your favorite country artists of older? I'd say uh, Merle Haggard, George Jones, a lot of '70s versions of those guys because yeah. they did come from the '60s, like Johnny Cash. But I always lent more into the '70s version of Johnny Cash or the '70s version of Merle Haggard. And yeah, I'm a real fan of George Jones. Yeah, I mean, no, I love George. If he Jones, showed yeah. up a little more often, he might have. I'd prefer him to Johnny, even though Johnny yeah, has yeah. a great backstory, and Rick Rubin grabbed him. Yeah, I mean, Johnny George, I have a big, um, um, he, yeah. I love him. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. No, no, he's, uh, <laughs> he's got a great haircut, too. When he had that crew cut, all those guys, it was yeah, like yeah, they were all like, they were all kind of all rockabilly and guys. His, his eyes, he just looked like the meanest yeah. MF. Yeah, yeah. Like, he has these, like, total beady eyes. Yeah. Like, um, and he's, uh, apparently his, he's got a hell of a biography, too. Yeah, all those guys have big drinking and jail time biographies. <laughs> Didn't he? Dro <laughs> he drove his um like motor like his um wife took his keys away of his car, so he drove like the 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 riding lawnmower to the bar. Apparently, uh, he like drove it down the highway. That sounds like a David Lynch <laughs> movie or something. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> do you find um um do you have any spiritual beliefs? Um, or non beliefs? Um, I'm, I'd say I'm a spiritually oriented person, but I'm pretty much um don't have any one religion that I say, oh, I'm Christian or I'm this or I'm that. Do you believe What's the inspiration for your music? Hey, I'm asking the questions here. Uh, uh, God just spoke, I guess. Uh, yeah, no. no, I was saying earlier, inspiration for music is like a, just uh, actually listening to a lot of other music that I, I like. But has to ever a song come to you and like just you've been, have you ever channeled a song like... I in the vessel where it kind of wrote itself and you were like, how did that happen? Yeah, uh, that's lately has been happening oh, to yeah? me a lot in my dreams, actually. I've been oh, yeah? uh, hearing music in my head and I wake up and I'll be singing something. I go, that is some weird original. That right. I, and so even this morning I, uh, I wrote and I recorded um, and I was trying not to make too much noise to wake people up. Mm -hmm. I was like, I had to get this song down. That was It, it sounded like a, it was a girl singer, right. and it was like a 90s pop song. So it's like you could it hear original, it, and then also, yeah, you but could, it was, you but know. you could hear it, and then you just sort of played, you followed. That's apparently how, how yesterday was, he woke up, and the tune was in his head, and he yeah. was like, I didn't write this, this yeah. movie. and he went around, and he was like, do you recognize this? He was like, no, you wrote it, and right, it sort right. of came to you. So I, I find the same, like, you'll do the do the work, you'll like work a song and then sometimes the song will visit you. Which That's is, right. I find that kind of, you know, close to a spiritual experience. I mean, absolutely. Any, I mean, yeah. there's certain things like I'll, or I'll, mystic, maybe. Or I'll see something and uh, I'll, or a phrase and it will automatically be really musical. So, right. Um, but I think, yeah, you know, it's usually when I'm like working really hard at stuff and then sometimes when I take a break, then it'll... Yeah, sort of you, take over. That's right. So you kind of have to do the homework, and then it'll ride. You, it'll you know. subliminate, and you'll just be <laughs> riding your bike, or you'll be waking up, and you'll have this music going on. All you, right. You know, Two songwriters talking together. I hope it's interesting to you out there, the viewer. What would you like to ask us? 
This is uh, kind of like, this is Nash Gray and the Girl song. It's kind of rhythmic. It goes, uh... There's a difference in the clothes you wear for me Baby, a difference in the way that I should be Baby, I never do nothing you don't want to do I see you more than once and I like you too I know it sounds funny but I ain't that strange I'm taking a little I don't know what to say You say, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah Hey, yeah, 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 well, I never said I love you, but I knew you would. I say, you love me, say, you love me now. Well, there's talk on the street about the things that I should do. Baby, in the way of the world, it's no wonder that I found you. Baby, I never do nothing you don't wanna do. I see you more than once and I like you too. I know it sounds funny, but I am that strange. I'm sick of the time, now take it away, you take it away, you take it away. Say hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I never said I love you, but I knew you would. I say you love me, say you love me, say you love me now. All right, here we go. I don't want to know what's different. I don't want to know what's the difference. I don't want to know what's the difference. I don't want to know what's the difference. Yep. Yeah. I'll say you love me. Say you love me. Say you love me now. Are you love me now? Are you love me now? Are you love me now? All right. Okay, people. I want to thank Ash Gray for coming on the deprogramming hour tonight. Thank you very much. He was fantastic. Go out and see him at the. National Underground every uh, Saturday from midnight to 3 a.m. So. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Thank Bye. You.
let you down Well, I'm a winner, but I choose to lose Watching the De Programming Hour, I'm here with John Vomit and Brandy Rowe. We're at the Grand Victory in Brooklyn in Williamsburg. Opposite the trash bar. Opposite the trash bar. Mm. And uh, Brandy Rowe's visiting from London. Yeah, uh, how do you like New York? What brought you here? I love it. I, I'm here to play shows, you know. Yeah, no, I love it. It's, it's kind of not too dissimilar from, from London, you know. Well, it is completely. But like, <laughs> It's completely dissimilar or completely similar? Well, I don't know. Kind of the big, the big city thing, you know. Yeah, it's kind of, it's very, it's very. Is the music scene the same? I heard that there's well, a lot of. Well, there's no music scene in London right now. Okay. No. What well, is there a music scene in New York? I don't know. I mean, there is, and this is the neighborhood well, I, for I, I, it. I think my, London people, last I heard, thought there was a music scene, and they were uh, taken from the really shitty hipster stuff from Williamsburg. Uh, I, I, I think I think that might be outdated now. Um, oh wow, well, yeah, that's been going on for a while. <laughs> well, you you play like constantly oh, over yeah. there, right? All, all the time, yeah, as much as I possibly can. Yeah, keep the demons away. But I mean, I'm trying to make something happen, like with my own kind of thing, but I don't know. So tonight you were alone. I was. Even though you, you had a couple people join you at the end, but back home you have three things going on your yeah. solo act, and then you have a 1977 punk style band and then uh yeah, yeah, I, right. was it a nine piece rock and roll brandy row and the troubadours that's right yes so basically that band started as like it kind of blossomed from my acoustic shows and then a couple of friends would get up would get up on stage with me play my songs and then it kind of escalated then i had nine people i had to deal with which is kind of funny because the whole thing of me playing acoustic music was i was just sick of like working with people that didn't really want to do it so I, I just completely dropped out. Did I don't care if it's a bit folky or no one really digs it as much, but it was just easier, you know, and it's easier for me to get on a plane and go to New York and play by myself. But yeah, so that escalated, and now I've got a nine-piece band, and it's amazing. It's really lots of fun. So what are, what's the instrumentation of the nine-piece? Okay, so it's uh, electric guitar, bass, drums, acoustic guitar, uh, mandolin, piano, violin, uh, saxophone, accordion, and a female vocalist. 
Okay. Yeah, so it's. But so she's she's backup vocals. Yes, yeah, but she, yeah, yeah. I would say she's a she's a lead singer as well, but I guess she's backup. There's you do all the writing for yeah, her, both yeah, all yeah. three that's acts. Why, yeah, that's why it's kind of brandy around the troubadours without being egotistical. Yeah. There was another band called the Troubadours, so that's that's another okay. reason. Drugs. But yeah. <laughs> all right, man. But um, yeah. So I do all the songwriting and stuff, and it's kind of yeah, it's great. We released that single. We've just recorded three new songs, and they shall be released very soon. Yeah, no, it's lots of fun. It's fucking hard work, though, man, you know. No, Do you find that people are rude in New York as compared to London? No, I find quite the opposite. You know, I think everyone in America is kind of really polite. Whether that's false, I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Maybe they just like you because you fit in or something. Do you think I fit in? I'm I think you could, you could be a New Yorker. You could be a New Yorker. I could be anything. Anyone could be anything. So, what's your inspiration? Just typical musician Life. question. Life. Life. Yeah, I, was, cause I can't. I can't like. I can't put like pinpoint what. Well, musically, there's loads. You know, of course, there's Joe's drama, which is the obvious. Johnny Founders, which is the obvious. But I try not to rip people off. But just life in general, you can put anything into a song. You know, anything that affects you or whatever, whatever you, your profession is. You know, yeah, I would say life is my okay. inspiration. I think it's everyone's inspiration, though, to to kind of get up in the morning is life. When you write your music, does the music come first or do the lyrics come first? Well, I've got a really weird, like, technique of writing music. I don't ever write stuff down. I, I've, I've, I, I, could, I can barely write. That's probably the reason. No, no. Like, I just end up playing a song, like, write the music, and then I just kind of, these lyrics just come out of me, and that's just what happens. But I find it's, it's the easiest way. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't write down the lyrics, you just make it up I as you go? I write down the lyrics afterwards, yeah, okay. after it's all come out. I don't know what, what, what the, that formula happens, I don't know, but it's just the way I do it. It's the only way I can do it. I mean, I've written, obviously, I've written a couple of songs. This is this is Erin right here. Erin. I'm stage fright, I'm stage fright. Erin <laughs> introduced She's us there. to Brandy Road. She's, She's the woman who made it all happen, ladies and gentlemen. She's the manager in New York City. And this is Louisa Bradshaw. Louisa Bradshaw. Oh my, my amazing. It was great seeing you with you. This you amazing. Go. We just, we just played a show, right, and uh, Louisa was singing with me, and it was amazing. It was great to see One, one, one rehearsal. One rehearsal. One rehearsal. Amazing. Oh, it. You don't so get that shit in London. Then, you just met the so place. this one. Aaron makes it. it all happen. It does. It does. <laughs> yeah, we've How did you find out about Brandy? By mistake, actually. Yeah. Well, no, thanks. Sandy, man. You know. I Sandy. thought he was a... a different musician that I needed to book for my Sandy benefit okay. and then he's like I live in London I'm like oh wait you're not that guy <laughs> <laughs> and then you just ended up his manager yeah we started talking like we were saying what do you want to what, what do you want to be remembered for my fucking songs man and my lyrics you know like I kind of the full circle thing of like all the people that have inspired me and got me out of really bad situations I would love to do that for other people you know like people that are in bad situations that can listen to my song and think oh actually there is someone else who's going through this as well maybe I can like survive you know right, right. yeah that's what I would like to you were telling me earlier well we were talking about the 1977 punk yeah, sure as your inspiration but you said you've been listening to Motown recently. Yeah, don't be so shocked by that. I've listened to Motown for a while, but I strictly listen to like 60s stuff and, you know, well, all sorts of music, you know, like I kind of, I grew up with punk like from an early age. I had like a Mohican when I was nine and stuff and I didn't really know anything different apart from the punk thing. But yeah, I listen to a lot of music because otherwise like I wouldn't be writing the stuff I'm doing. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you came to New York and we got to see you thank and you, uh, thank, you so much. thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much and yeah, check me out, brandyroad.com. See you again. Thank you very much.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.